Hey, and uh, welcome to Generation Catalano. We are here, you know, doing like, kind of doing practice shows for a while, you know, until I can get it back on the iTunes. But, uh, that'll, you guys will figure that out soon anyways. Alright, so, of course, uh, I'm Josh, uh, and I'm here with uh, David. What Hello. Yep. Hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> David, uh, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been playing some Halo Reach a yep. lot, and uh, that's been really fun. I've been trying to go through get getting daily challenges each day. I actually got the yeah. weekly challenge this week, which was worth a lot of credits, so that was awesome. And uh, I've been enjoying playing online Halo Reach lately, so yeah. I Would played you... a little bit of Skyrim the other day. Yeah, Halo Reach has the uh, daily challenges or something like that. Is it really daily? Because some of those look like like that would take more than a day to do. Though. No, yeah, they, it's daily. They give out four daily challenges each day, uh -huh. and then they have a a weekly challenge, just one challenge each week, and that one's usually the hardest one to do. Oh, but, um, is it a week? A, a straight up weekly challenge? Yeah, they give you an entire week to do it. And it's usually worth a lot more points uh -huh. to do that. So I got to do a weekly challenge, and I got a ton of points for doing it. And the weekly challenges actually do all daily challenges in one day. That's the most recent one. Given day. They're different throughout yeah. the weeks, but that's the recent one, yeah. But uh, yeah, I've been playing Halo Reach and uh, a little bit of Skyrim. Yeah, definitely. Well. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people play Skyrim. There's definitely like a lot of updates and stuff that are coming out for that. Yeah, we of course actually we'll be, uh, we'll be talking about that later. Yeah, we've actually got some news on uh, some updates coming out soon. Yeah, uh, of course that game was really buggy. Uh, apparently, when it came out, I mean, I know it was buggy on the PS3. Yeah, but I'm still, sure it was kind of buggy on the 360 as well. Yeah, it's still kind of buggy as of now, uh -huh. but um, hopefully with these updates, some of those will be fixed as well. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, most of the updates have uh, like a bunch of bug fixes, you know. I know they, apparently they came out with one that fixed a lot of the PS3's problems. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, we should move on to introducing more peeps, because of course Charlie's here too. Yo, what's up everyone? Charlie, uh, you, I mean, you're pretty much been playing like Halo Reach and shit, anyways. Well, I was, I fell down a hole. I was playing uh, Skyrim a lot because I've been trying to do all the quests and everything, getting a lot of stuff there, collecting unique weapons and such. But uh, I've also been playing a lot of Modern Warfare 3, and then, as David previously stated, he's been playing a lot of Reach. So I've been sort of balancing that act between Reach, Skyrim, and uh, Modern Warfare 3. And some uh, Gotham City imposters in, in the mix uh, when I could fit it. But that's pretty much all I've been up to. Gotham City, uh, that's interesting that Gotham City imposters is, uh, you know, you know pen penetrating what you're already, like, working on there with well, uh, Skyrim and Halo. Well, I am a really Halo. big Batman fan, and while this doesn't have too much to do with Batman other than, like, a general theme, I guess, of, you know, people who are Batman fans and Joker fans fighting out in a sort of... Uh, Team Fortress 2 style gameplay, but it, yeah, it seems team, pretty interesting. Yeah, it is a lot like Team Fortress 2 because of the, uh, the comical style. And yeah, everything. and a lot of the weapons and stuff like that seem to be based on the same thing, just still within the Batman realm. Okay. So those, those are pretty much the games you've been up to? Yeah. You haven't been up to like anything like uh, noteworthy besides all that? No, just that and... Uh, doing like um, a little 3DS thing where you're collecting your friends and getting the tokens and collect picture pieces and puzzle pieces and shit. Oh, yeah. so that's pretty much the, it. Yeah, the find me thing. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, I just completed find me number one today and now I have find me two. Yeah. So that's some cool stuff. I didn't, I totally didn't even expect that. Yeah, I didn't even know it existed. At all. So it was interesting uh, to see that they added something like that there. 
It, it is almost like they added a whole new sequel, pretty much. Like, Find, like find yeah. Me was its own game, well, and then once you beat it, it's like, hey, here's the second game. Or whatever. Uh, I like the way how that is up. Well, do they have uh, different enemies? In yeah, there's a, on Find Me, you fight ghosts. But on Find Me 2, you actually fight slimes, like little slime creatures. Yeah. Like from the Dragon Quest universe sort of thing? Yeah, no, they're more like blobs with like weird teeth. But, uh... Well, uh, slimes, though. I mean, there's usually like slimes in Dragon Quest or... Uh, yeah. yeah. Or what's look, that? Uh, Zelda like, had another... Zelda had a yeah, thing, they, too. They yeah. look more like those, the ones from Zelda. Because the ones from Dragon that makes Quest, sense. they're like... Little uh, raindrop looking things. Yeah, like smiley teardrops. Faces, yeah. So yeah. That's exactly what it does not look like. Well, it but, makes, um, makes more sense that they're similar to Zelda. I mean, it is a fucking Nintendo system, and Zelda is one of their IPs. Yeah. I know what you mean. They're going to keep a consistency somewhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, like if, the if you have a weapon in your arsenal, stuff. why not use it, you know? Weapons? Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. They're going to rest on their laurels kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. Another cool feature about Find Me 2 is that you get to hire your previous friends instead of just hiring little level 1 or level 2 cats. No, when yeah. you hired them, okay, I know the benefit of hiring uh, your friends is that they're like pretty high level. Yeah. But yeah. before, like, I've hired, uh, I've tried to do the thing where you hire a computer. They always seem really weak, like, almost like it's random, well, but they're always weak for some reason. Well, yeah, isn't it? they're usually level ones or level twos if you buy the little cat com the computer characters. For if two you points. buy, if you buy, uh, if you buy your. They're usually your, animals, aren't they? Yeah, cats and dogs, yeah. depending you on buy, what your profile if is. If you buy your friends that keeps their level their current level that they are yeah so like um, say you're level seven I'll, I can hire you for it's uh, you it, it the price differs from level to level it's, it's uh, your level seven it usually takes nine coins so I'd have to spend nine of the play coins from the 3ds to buy a level seven character uh, so it, it costs more for the yeah. higher level characters. Yeah, sure. say like a level three character might be four coins. Yeah. Or something. Well, that makes sense. The stronger the you know the weapon, the more expensive it's going to be. It's, right. You know, uh, well, game uh, mechanics 101. Especially because using the coins themselves is almost like a, like a cheat code kind of thing. Yeah. Isn't this a little counterintuitive though? Because wasn't the whole like uh, gimmick? behind the find me thing was like, hey, hang out with your friends and you guys will interact, you know, all together and shit. But now you don't have to. You could well, literally just stay in your house and hire them once a day. The reason the reason why they did that though, I think, is because Find Me Two is more in depth. There's more levels it seems because are the, are the enemies bigger. harder? Well you said you didn't you say something about you have to rescue three people instead of one? Yeah, you rescue three people instead of one person this time. And instead of a, just a castle, you're actually traveling across a like a giant land. Oh, continent mass. sort of thing. So, you, and there's forks in the road also. There's different paths you can take this time around instead of just going linear from okay, room to so room. so you can actually choose uh, yeah, like which way you want to go. Yeah, because I know the first one was uh, it was just a, a map, but it was really just you know you're moving from A to Z. Uh, you don't. Yeah. You don't choose any kind of, like, directions at all. Very mm -hmm. linear, yeah. <clears throat> Definitely. But, um, they only allow you to buy three friends a day. Oh. So. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know if there was... Spam them. I wonder if there was a limit, uh, on the, like, on Find Me 1. Because I bought a no. few, I've, I've only bought a few, uh, what do you call it? A there's, few of the computer like characters? Yeah, there's a limit on there. I think you can only have like ten. Yeah, I was cats. gonna say because I bought a day seven or so at least. Well not a day, just at once. But yeah, this is I believe okay. three three friends a day, so yeah. yeah. Right. Now, on this me too, or find me too, can you hire real people and still hire the little dogs? Like let's say you had um yeah, eleven you coins, both. you hire level seven for nine coins, can you hire a dog for two coins? 
Yeah, you can uh, hire both well, your friends or cats. Well, you make the most bang for whatever buck you have. Yeah, so that's everybody. You know, it's me, uh, Josh, uh, David, and Charlie on today's episode. Yep, and, yep. Uh, you know, we have a few things to talk about. We're going to talk about a lot of Nintendo news. And, uh, you know, there's new Mario Brothers, some Kirby news, and 3DS firmware. Uh, you know, got a little Sonic story. Um, later on, we're also going to talk about, uh, you know, well, there's also Skyrim updates. Um, but, you know, today's episode, uh, we're mainly going to be talking about Halo 4 because uh, there's just a lot a lot of news coming out for that game. Yeah, very right recently, now. it seems. Yep. Yeah. So, there's a lot going on with Halo 4, for sure. So, we're going to have a lot to talk about that. And we all, you know, we've been playing Halo for a while, you know, since Halo 1, of course. And, uh, you know, we, most of us, you know, we play Halo, like, all, all damn day. So... You know, Halo 4 is going to be pretty great, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. We definitely got to go to the midnight sale like we've been doing. Midnight sale. There could yeah. be a chance. Yeah, we went to the Halo 3 one, which was okay. Yeah, that was awesome. I love picking up my uh, Master Chief helmet. You know, <laughs> one, of the, one of the few people that could yeah. afford it for 150 bones. But I wonder what kind of giveaways are going to give away. Maybe, uh... Or, not giveaways, but... Well, you know, kind of packages. Swag and shit, yeah. Legendary are you talking package. about... Are you really talking like, about uh, the pre-orders and all that kind of shit? Yeah, exactly. Like, legendary editions? Yeah, like the legendary editions. I wonder what they'll have. I'm hoping it's some sort of a figurine. You know, something you'd set on your desk or shelf or something. Because the mm -hmm. helmet's awesome, but it's really big. You know, it's like a... It's more of a centerpiece at a display than a standalone piece. Hmm. But it fits really nicely with my uh, Skyrim dragon statues. A lot of new stuff actually happened this week. It seemed like it was some really good stuff. Um, I know. Uh, yeah, I guess you have a point. E three is coming up in a couple of months, and that I think E three this year is probably going to be one of the best ones in a long time because they're going to be introducing so much new stuff. Um, and do you say that because of uh, the new consoles that are probably yeah, going to be introduced? There's going to be uh, some Wii U stuff there, definitely. They're going to be showing off the system. That's for damn sure. And uh, I mean, hasn't there been talks? There's been talks about the... I know Microsoft and Sony have already come out to say... Hey, we're we're not going to we're not going to show off our system not until like I think it's like 2014 or something they were saying. Wow. But uh, it's starting to look like they're they're already talking about their consoles. So you know, you never know. Like we could be in for a huge surprise. That would in, be cool uh, if they uh, did that. Yeah, it really. Yeah, I was surprised uh, what you're saying about. 2014, and I, they, I think I've, I've read that somewhere before. They already have the code name out for the next Xbox, which is a code name Durango. Yeah. Well, I know they've uh, they definitely been coming out with a lot of information for the new consoles, uh, and you know, like code name Durango for the Xbox and Orbis for the PS3, and of mm -hmm. course the Wii U, which is already old news by now. Um, and of course, it's definitely kind of early for new consoles. I think um, Xbox maybe because they got an early start on this current gen with uh, 2005, I believe. Well, that's just another. That's just a, a year earlier. But I mean, Nintendo they released their system last in this current gen, and they're already. They've already announced their new yeah. system this yeah. this next well, gen. So. I think uh, you know. I think a lot of people expected Nintendo to do theirs right away because of you know the Wii is already yeah, like decline. a generation behind. Yeah. So they already had uh, you know slack to pick up. So, but you know they're definitely you know I say that they're uh, announcing them a little early only because, uh, you know, they were already pretty expensive in the first place. And, 
you know, there's still really great games coming out for each of the consoles. That, there's, you know, except the Wii, but then, yeah. th there's rumors that a Wii U is going to be 300 bucks. Um, yeah, those well, are just rumors, but That's people, kind of yeah, people think that that gonna not ha no, that's going to be a bad thing. Is it a whole new console or just a controller Which, for the Wii? No, it's a completely new console. Which I don't think, in my personal opinion, I don't really think it's that bad because the Wii was 250 So it's just a $50 price increase over, what, six, seven years? No, but the big deal is, is, yeah. is the Wii, everyone expected such great things and there's only, what, what 12 games that are really noteworthy, and they're like, you uh, know, who, franchises that they... Who, who expected great things from the Wii? Uh, people who buy it, I'm sure. Well, no, actually, I take that back. Most of their uh, customer base was casual gamers, you know, like well, people who like I, Wii Fit, Mario Party, I Parties, expected like that. great things from the Wii to, be, to begin with, and I got what I wanted. They really? You're satisfied? Like I believe so, yeah. The main well, thing that I liked the most when they announced it was the virtual console, and they, they, there were a few mix-ups there in the virtual console area, but they delivered. They made games, old retro games, pretty much um, accessible to everybody. I think the virtual console, you know, I think the virtual console did turn out better than expected, but, you know, of course, uh, I don't even know if I could say that because Nintendo would come out and say, like, you know, every game for the old consoles is going to be out. But, you know, they definitely came out with good games, you know, like uh, Mario RPG or, um, or Chron Chrono Trigger and, you know, things like that. <clears throat> Except uh, a lot of the licensed games can't come out because of all those issues. What are the issues? It's their you know, like, IPs mostly, right? You know, like, people talk about games like the DuckTales game, which I haven't played myself, or the uh, Darkwing Duck game, which I have not played. Oh, I didn't know either. this came out on a Nintendo system. Well, it's for the NES, and, uh, you know, there's there's a handful of games that are probably just too much trouble to come out because uh, multiple companies own the characters and all that kind of thing. or. You know, there's also like those uh, Aladdin games, like there's Aladdin for Super Nintendo and for Genesis that never came out, <coughs> and yeah. you know, those are yeah. highly but, acclaimed um, uh, games. There's a few of those kind of games that uh, I, I was pretty surprised that they came out with, because I used to play this a lot on my Super NES, was uh, Super Star Wars, and uh, uh -huh. I can't believe they, I think they did that. that so yeah, I think that was there. pretty exceptional, uh, you know, based on the idea of the uh, licenses being difficult. Plus, they've got, they've got my favorite games anyways, like Link to the Past, Oh yeah, the, uh, Donkey Kong Country 2. They're definitely going to have the, uh, <laughs> the, the heavy hitters, of course. Um, Super Mario World, of course. Super Mario Bros. 3. I mean... I don't know, I still feel like they delivered. The one thing that they didn't really, well, actually two, two games I would only really expect them to deliver upon that they didn't was Yoshi's Island and um, for the Super NES and Donkey Kong 64. But I know Donkey Kong 64 is probably rare. Right, they haven't come out with uh, either of those games yet. No. They're yeah. probably not going to. Yeah. I don't know, none of this really seems oh. too spectacular to me because this is all stuff I could get on my computer and <coughs> probably have it on emulation somewhere. That's yeah, the that's point. the weird thing. Yeah, it's true that a lot of people already have these games yeah. on emulators. Or even if you're a hipster, you probably have Kong the original console. on the emulator, but I'd like to not have to worry about bugs or anything like that. No, no. Or like, you know, I'd like to yeah. play a good version of it. Just sit down with my system and play it like I used to back in the day. I don't want to sit there and have to have a keyboard in front of me or something. I know I play with a controller, yeah. but it's just it just takes away from it. Yeah. My whole thing is I'm just I wanted a lot more uh, like console style games. 
you know, they came out with, uh, what, two Zelda games, new Zelda games. Uh, that, that was good. Yeah. They came out with some, uh, two Mario Galaxy games. Good when stuff. Did it, that's, but, uh, yeah. When, no, I know Twilight Princess wasn't a Wii exclusive, but when no. do you hear that they launched two huge Zelda games and two huge Mario games on the same system? Well, that's... They delivered in that area. Yeah, yeah. Big I time. think... I don't know. Maybe it's just because there's so few hardcore games or games driven towards the hardcore Nintendo fan versus all the... Um, you know, mom, well, yeah. soccer mom games, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like Cooking Mama and, and other little little games that are more for casual gamers and stuff. But yeah, like oh, uh, the big argument it seems on the web is is how Nintendo's sort of turned its back against the hardcore gamers, and every now and again they'll throw them a bone. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, one. Yeah. Well, once again, it's a it's another it's Nintendo history. it's another Nintendo machine where. The good games are the, uh, you know, they're either remakes or sequels of Zelda or Mario or Donkey Kong. Metroid, yeah. Yeah, or Metroid. Um, but, you know, well, it's obvious it's obvious that Nintendo focuses more on the gameplay. And, you know, they'll, they'll definitely... That's thunder. Yeah. yeah. We're recording in a rainstorm. Welcome to Florida. Do, 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 do. Zapdos. <clears throat> New uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 will be coming out. On the 3DS. Yep. Yeah, it's for the 3DS. And yeah, Nintendo's been saying that they've been working on a new Mario game. And it wasn't going to be a sequel to Mario 3D Land. It was going to be another flat kind of 2D game. Yeah, and, they've basically uh, come out with the sequel yeah. to New Super Mario Bros. The game, that, uh, the game that appeared on the on the regular DS, they're getting yeah. a, uh, they're pretty much coming out with the sequel, New Super Mario Bros. 2, for the 3DS. And it's going to be, yeah, it's the same thing, it's two-dimensional side-scroller, but of course it's in 3D, so... It's going to look really amazing. Yeah, uh, things the, popping out and stuff. The death. Right, the backgrounds and stuff are going to yeah, be the, like uh, kind of crazy. Death perception. All that, that's going to, yeah, like the blocks, you're going to see like coins in your face and stuff. Yeah, they brought back uh, the running, because in this game, they're bringing back the power leaf. Oh, right, like in Mario 3? Yep. Yep, that, like Super Mario Brothers 3. They're bringing back the power leaf, and they have the raccoon Mario suit. It's not to be confused with the Tanuki suit, like in Super Mario 3D Land. Yeah. This, is, stone. this is the the original, the raccoon suit. When you grab the leaf yeah. in Super Mario Bros. 3, and you grow the uh, tail and the ears, but you're still wearing Mario suit. Um, yeah, they've got the raccoon Mario suit in this game. Um, they've got, yeah, to where you can run, and you'll uh, start flying through the air, just like in Super Mario Bros. 3. So that's most of the information they have right now. Um, How is this information leaked to us? Um, well, this uh, this came from Nintendo, actually, last night. They had a little Nintendo Direct event, as they call it, mm -hmm. um, where they release news... Yeah. for their upcoming games and they announced this last night and they had some screenshots and we're looking at some screenshots right now and it's actually looking really nice. Right. Uh, I, I kind of want to jump in and say uh, Nintendo, I know they have their little YouTube channel which is, and they have a show called Nintendo Direct. Do they show that on the Nintendo channel on the Wii? Like how do they broadcast this? Is it just directly on YouTube? Well, uh, I haven't checked my Wii, like, uh, what was it, there's a, uh, are you talking about, like, the shop channel or something? No, I'm talking about the Nintendo Direct, like, how do they... Right, there's the Nintendo channel that has a lot of videos and yeah. such. I haven't checked that, but I know if you go to YouTube and, uh, search for Nintendo, or it's Nintendo's user, you know, most of it's commercials and trailers, but there's yeah. another thing that they call Nintendo Direct. So yeah, the uh, and uh, but this stuff has been uh, announced in Japan. There was some sort of Nintendo Direct, uh, like like a trade show kind of thing that happened. Yeah, and um, and yeah, they they had it in Japan last night, and uh, they announced it. Uh, I think it was like early this morning or really late last night, but 
Mm -hmm. So yeah, they announced new Super Mario Brothers 2 for the 3DS. Uh, they're also saying that on Nintendo's Facebook page, they have revealed that Luigi will be in the game. Um, was Luigi in New Super Mario Bros. 1? Maybe. Uh, I'm not I sure. want to say if you I'm got all sure. the coins, you could play as him. But I'm not 100%. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if know. he was in the DS game. I know he was in the Wii game. Obviously, because they had the four players, so yeah, player two had, was uh, Luigi, of course. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, New Super Mario Brothers two coming out in both Japan and North America in August 2012 this year, which is actually pretty early for they just announced this game, but they have said yeah. they've been working on it. But it's pretty interesting they how we're here in freaking April. Um, so May, June, July, August, four months away. Yeah. Is this game's already come out, so that's um, pretty neat. Right, they've been talking about it for a while, and uh, I'd assume it doesn't take too long to make a Mario game. You know, you just set up the blocks and True, the, yeah, uh, nowadays everything. it's really easy. Don't yeah, you just set, set it up. I'm sure there's some sort of designer who, like, sets everything up in places uh, in the levels where they think it'll be fun, and that's about it, you know. Mm -hmm. They've been making Mario games for years. Yeah. Yep. So, so yeah, I guess Luigi was in the first new Super Mario Bros, but they have yeah. confirmed that he's in the second one, so... Yeah, it's it's been a while since that one came It'll out. It'll be nice to see Luigi with the raccoon suit, because they haven't done that before, I'm pretty sure. Well, he has uh, some sort of suit in uh, Mario 3D Land. He has yeah, a Tanuki, Tanuki suit. suit. Or well, a, it's um, actually a Kitsune, yeah, like it's, a fox. Yeah, he has a Kitsune suit in... Uh, Mario 3D Land. Natural enemy. Well, I guess technically you can consider in Super Mario Brothers 3, since you get to play as Luigi too in that game. That yeah. He had the Rockin' Suit. A lot of times Luigi in those games was uh, just straight up Mario. palette swap or whatever. Yeah, it was Mario but green. Yeah. But I did, I always liked how, uh, how the raccoon tail had green stripes instead of like the brown stripes. Oh, uh, yeah. I always thought that was cool. <laughs> You know, continue on, on with like Nintendo news. Uh, Nintendo's going to be coming out with a Kirby anthology. Yeah, soon. it's a. Uh, it's there's still not much information on this yet. Um, all that yeah. they're saying now is that Kirby's 20th anniversary is coming up, <clears throat> so they're going to be releasing a right a <clears throat> basically a that shit anyways. <laughs> yeah, basically a game for the Wii. Just actually, just a Wii disc that'll have. They say all your favorite Kirby games. So I don't know if they're just gonna slap all the Kirby games onto yeah. one disc, or if they're. I think. I'm well, like not they too do a Sonic. The <coughs> Sonic collection. Yeah, I'm not too sure on this. I remember seeing something somewhere that uh, you'll be able to vote for what kind of games you want, maybe through their uh, Nintendo's Facebook. Oh. But um. <clears throat> Apparently they're going to be slamming a whole bunch of Kirby games onto this one disc, and uh... Right, uh, this, uh, this Kirby uh, 20th uh, anniversary thing reminds me of the Mario anniversary thing that happened recently. Yeah, on the, the 25th week. anniversary for Mario. Yeah, they ha it was basically Mario All-Stars, but uh, you know, Mario was, uh, it was kind of easier to predict what was going to be on it because it was Mario All-Stars. We already had that on Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. so we kind of knew what we were going to get. <coughs> but uh, this Kirby anthology, it's kind of hard to tell because there's Kirby handheld games and there's Kirby console games. Yeah, yeah Dreamland. And, yeah, and a lot of those games are similar. Isn't, uh, I know Kirby's Adventure is very similar to... Uh, Dreamland. Yeah, probably for the one for the Game Boy. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Because I know there's uh, aren't there two Kirby Dreamlands or. There's Kirby's uh, Dreamland Two also on the Game Boy. Okay. And uh, they had Kirby's Dreamland Three, but that was on Super Nintendo. Oh uh, yeah, I actually bought that for the Virtual Console. Yeah, I bought that too. <clears throat> um, but it's yeah, it's hard to tell what Kirby games they're going to put on there. 
you know, a lot of times Nintendo doesn't want to put handheld games onto the consoles. So, you know, I know Kirby, I, I really feel that Kirby is a stronger, you know, franchise on the handhelds. So, that would be really interesting yeah. to figure out what they're going to put on that Kirby anthology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of Kirby games they could do, you know, from Dreamland, Adventure, uh, Pinball Games, Dream Course, Avalanche, Superstar. I'm pretty sure Kirby 64 is going to be on there. Yeah, yeah, Crystal Shards, definitely. Um, yeah, I think that should be on there. Nightmare and Dreamland, probably, that's a good one. I remember then, Kirby 64 was shorter than a lot of the 2D Kirby games, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, it's easy to fit that on that disc. Maybe. Oh, wouldn't that be nice if Kirby's Epic Yarn was on there? That's a really good game. I like that game. I actually haven't played that. Don't you own that game? Yeah. You should have borrow that. Maybe. Yeah. That, that would be nice. Uh, I'm sure <clears throat> I'm Sure, not many people bought it, you know, especially in this week. It's a very underrated game. Er, yeah, underrated game. Yeah. I think. <clears throat> well, yeah, there was a handful of platformers that came out around that time that might have, you know, kind of got mixed together, you know, pe people didn't play them. Um, so, yeah, so, um, do we have a date for Kirby, or...? Yeah, um, apparently the new Kirby, uh, apparently also said was it's coming out later this year. Okay. I'm assuming it was announced at, at that Nintendo Direct thing. <laughs> information about Animal Crossing. They, uh, they had a, a couple screenshots that they released and it mm -hmm. uh, doesn't really look much different from what they showed at E3. Uh, although mm -hmm. yeah, I will say it's a really good looking Animal Crossing game. And yeah, what console is this for? And this is for the 3DS. This isn't oh, for handheld. a console. Okay. Basically, mm -hmm. they didn't really re release much information on it yet, only that it's supposed to arrive in Japan this fall. They haven't really announced a North America release yet, but um, they you will expect it out uh, in Japan this fall. More than likely, I know, um, I remember Animal Crossing on the DS came out in December. Oh yeah, City Folk? Yeah, so, well not City yeah. Folk, Wild World. Oh yeah. That yeah. came out... December. I think City Folk also came out in December. I know a lot of the. I think Animal Crossing games come out in the winter, at least for. Uh, I know America. the first. I know the first one came out. Uh, yeah, around winter time because I I got that around uh, my birthday in October, and uh, I knew it wasn't out for long. Mm, very so nice. uh, it'll be out in Japan this fall, possibly winter for us, maybe Crossing spring at the latest. But that's yeah. that's just our opinion. Our yeah. Members. But um, we love us some Animal Crossing. The official news is yeah, Animal Crossing 3DS Japan fall. Yeah. You know, if it's coming out in Japan in fall, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to say when it'll come out here because there's definitely a lot of translating to do in these games. That's there's true. There's a lot of text. You know, especially in the in the American one, there's definitely lots of cultural jokes and and whatnot, and I'm sure. The Japanese version has like different jokes in it, so you know Nintendo of America has to actually do some work for this game. It looks game. like the uh, one of the screenshots shows the skunk guy from mm -hmm. City Folk that used to shine your shoes in the city. Looks like he uh -huh. owns a uh, shop where you get to buy shoes. Yeah, so almost like the Evil yeah. Sisters, but instead you'll just go there and you'll buy shoes for your character. <coughs> yeah, looks looks oh, as if uh, right. yeah. Different shoes. If we're getting different accessories, perhaps beyond yeah, the, you the you'll shirt be able to change umbrella. shirts. You'll be able to change your hat. You'll be able to change your pants. You'll be able to oh, change yeah. the shoes. <laughs> now it looks like so you're going to be able to customize your character a lot more than the other games. Also, there's a screenshot of and it uh, looks like you get to customize your house very yeah. Like very like much. A, like so. an yeah, setup. you can you can put stuff on the walls now. Yeah. So not only does it look really good, it's got way more uh, in-depth than the other games. We got 
some uh, Nintendo 3DS news. Apparently there's going to be some firmware updates uh, coming to us in April 25th. That will allow us to organize our games and apps better into a system of folders similar to what you'd have on your desktop. You know, so you could, uh, I guess you could have music and pictures and you could access them without having to go into individual programs and stuff like that. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's going to be this April 25th. That's uh, yeah, like three, four days, three, four days from yeah, now. Pretty nice. We're going to have a new firmware update. It's going to update the 3DS. Yeah, so you can organize your games and your apps all in the full, into a folder system. And it will also support software patches. Very nice. Yeah, yeah first, uh, yeah, I see where the folder system works because the 3DS definitely has a, a limit on how many slots mm -hmm. there are for downloaded software. Uh, it was the same one with the DSi. On my 3DS menu, I have it all the way zoomed out, but it would be nice to actually throw some games into folders. That way I don't have to have all these little icons everywhere. I, I would really like to put like all the like the all the GBA games into exactly. one folder, yeah, got, or all the NES games. Into yeah, one. all your music, all pictures, stuff like that. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, I've got a uh, DSI games that are just sitting around that I don't really play, and they're taking up clutter on the menu. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be pretty nice. Besides the folders, of course, they're going to have the ability to have patches and games. I guess we'll find out if they actually do that. <laughs> uh, uh. Apparently the Wii had a system where you could not patch games, but it was, you know, certain companies had workarounds for that, just like uh, Skyward Sword had the whole Wii channel for yeah. patching your save file. Was this yeah. considered, didn't they have Metroid Other M, how you had to send in an SD card? Yeah, Metroid box, Other... So that they could patch that. Yeah, Metroid, uh, you know, Nintendo never releases patches, and uh, Metroid Other M had a really huge bug in it where you'd get stuck, and Twilight Princess had it as well. Uh -huh. So with Metroid Other M, yeah, you had to like send in your, you, you had, had to send to in a memory card with your file. On. Yeah, you had to mail in an SD card. They would then take that SD card, put the uh, the fix. Uh, the fixed file on your SD card so mm -hmm. it could fix the bug and if you got it back in the mail then lucky you you can just uh, follow their instructions and load it and it'll fix your save file. It's the most archaic way of going about doing it. So before we do our break, we have one more story. Uh, Sonic 4 Episode 2 beta was uh, accidentally leaked to Steam users. Apparently people are already playing Sonic 4 Episode 2. They, yeah, they, uh, I guess uh, they accidentally leaked a beta. I don't know what exactly happened, but people started playing it, and uh, mm -hmm. they actually made comments about the game. Like right here it says, jumping feels better and you don't hmm. lose all forward momentum when you jump, uh, uh, some of the commenters said. Yeah. So it looks like the game's been, you know, touched up quite a bit. You know, uh, that was a big thing in, uh, that I thought was very different from the older Sonic games, was the, uh, the forward momentum when jumping. Uh, in Sonic 4 Episode 1, you know, the old one that came out, you had to hold, you know, you had to hold the joystick forward if you wanted Sonic to keep moving in that direction. But most of the older games, you could let go of the controls and Sonic will kind of keep moving. You know, he'll keep roll, he'll keep running forward, he'll keep flying forward, or something. Yeah. You know, they there was more momentum. Sonic Four really, uh, you know, they tried to, you know, like 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 they nerfed it or whatever. Yeah. They because you could play it like an old Sonic game as long as you knew what you were doing. If you wanted to fucking go forward, you held forward. But if you were one of these new folks who didn't play the older games, you know, you felt a little more in control because Sonic wouldn't just fly across the screen. Exactly. It seems like a lot of uh, people seem to actually like it. Like they said, uh, well, it's good. They they're praising the game. And that, well, uh, I liked it. I liked the older controls better anyways. 
So what they did, they yeah, they accidentally released this beta. People were playing it, and then um, mm -hmm. it said uh, it was uh, of course completely uh, incomplete. So it had bugs, missing textures, and other issues. People s are sitting here playing it, and then Sega gets notified, and they mm -hmm. end up they end up cracking down on it. They wipe out all the discussion boards on Steam, and then they uh, talking about it, yeah. and then they pull the beta from the store so no one else can play it. It's kind of weird when uh, there hasn't really been much news, at least I thought recently about it, until they like brought this beta out and then people started mm -hmm. playing it. There are some screenshots out right now. Um, we might end up posting them on the Facebook or uh, Generation Cattle on our <laughs> Facebook page. Yeah, um, along with the show notes, yeah. So, Maybe. but uh, it look, of course uh, they're, they're showing tales and it looks like they've got the bonus mm -hmm. stage from Sonic uh, 2, right? Yeah, yeah. Sonic 2. Like Sonic 2. They, they, you know, they yeah. throw that in a lot of the games. And, also, and there's a Sonic on the uh, on the tornado, like from uh, Sonic 3. Yeah, yeah it looks a lot like the intro to Sonic More bonus three. stages. And look at that. The, uh, it looks like, like Sonic Generations or whatever. Yeah, you know, like, he's running like away from the playing, screen. Like you're playing uh, Sonic Unleashed or something. At least I know what you're saying. Stage. Yeah, these bonus stage uh, screenshots make it look that way. You know, in the old uh, Sonic Four, you know, Sonic and some of the enemies were a uh, they were a, they were an actual 3D model, while the backgrounds were uh, like pre-rendered, kind of like uh, Donkey Kong Country. Mm -hmm. So you know, of course, the special stage is going to be 3D. They you know they've been yep. doing that since the Genesis days. Our hero, our hero, claims a warrior's heart. I tell you, I tell you, the dragonborn comes with a voice wielding power. has passed and the legend yet grows you'll know you'll know the dragonborns come ah -ha. So, uh, Skyrim, there's, uh, there's an update coming pretty soon. Yeah, we've got a update for Skyrim coming in within the next few weeks. Um, they're basically enabling Kinect support. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it's only going to be voice commands, though. Yeah, you won't get waggle or wave or any sort of, like, uh, visual sort of things. This is shouts and things you can talk to your TV about. Equip your sword. Uh, if you want to go to the quick map, you can do that by just saying a command. You can go to your quick map and actually like fast travel to other cities around Skyrim by basically just saying what you want to do. And you're even going to add in one of the most uh, uh, anticipated options that they're going to add in with the connect support is that you'll be able to do your shouts through voice commands. So. You can actually scream at your game and knock bitches back 50 yeah. yards. Faro da, motherfuckers. I heard that um, it's not going to be completely seamless, though. You'll still have to hold down the shout button in case you want to. Yeah. Do that. Uh, what shout button is that? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, apparently it's Bethesda said that uh, Connect has like English voice commands built in. Yeah. But for some of the like you know the dragon speak and whatnot, you have to hold down a button. So exactly. it's like uh, like preset phrases they put in mm -hmm. because. Yeah, they, they can program the dragon speak. Right, they can program connect to just do like English words and whatnot. But yeah, the dragon speak has to be the buttons. As for other commands, you, in case you have like uh, your house Carl follow you, like an ally or something, you can mm -hmm. just be like, "Hey, ally, go over here." Well, it doesn't really go like that. It's not. It's basically just like ally wait or ally attack or ally come or whatever, and mm -hmm. they'll uh, follow you. So yeah, they've got that, and they've got it to where you can uh, equip like a, a bow, or equip even your spells. Hmm. Say like, uh, and you can actually assign hotkeys to these things, and actually make it to where your favorites are more easily accessible that way. <clears throat> do you think you can do like, uh, like a fast switch kind of thing with the voice commands? Because I don't, I don't really play the game myself that much. Uh, you know, what if you could like really, you know, in a really quick way, uh, equip like a bow and arrow yeah, apparently compared to a, another weapon just just by a voice command? Apparently, they've got that. They've got it to where you can just uh, give a voice command and will uh, you can equip that. Although. Uh, I do know it takes a few words here and there to get exactly what you want. Um, say you want to equip a sword. Mm -hmm. If you just say equip blah blah blah, it'll equip it to your right hand. But say you want to equip it to your left hand, you'll have to say more commands like equip blah 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 left hand. Or mm -hmm. um, I know to actually get everything that you want on and stuff, you know, it, you're, you're gonna have to say a few more commands. So it can uh, it can either be Effective or a hindrance because you can easily just go into your favorites and click the left trigger or right trigger to equip mm -hmm. you know, left hand or right hand. Um, they do have that option though. In case you don't want to bother with buttons, you can just say what mm -hmm. you want. But I like how it says, um, Dragon Shouts are a different story. You can say them in the English translation without a problem, but to use them in the Dragon Speak, you have to hold down the button while speaking. So if you were to say, um, Faro Da, it would do it, but you'd have to hold down the button. But if you use the English translation, which would be uh, unrelenting force, force you, you just, do, just it do it without it. hitting a button whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, if we're all playing the game, we're going to want to say the speak because it further immerses us in the experience. Also, I noticed, uh, since I said earlier that I started playing Skyrim again, mm -hmm. um, I noticed they had an update not too long ago that added kill animations into the game for, say, archery or spells. They didn't have that before. They only had it to where uh, sword attacks and stuff, right? Melee combat. Yeah. So um, now, when you mm -hmm. launch like a spell that'll kill your opponent, um, it'll uh, show like a little clip, like a little uh, you know animation first. Yeah. And then you'll yeah. Yeah. They added uh, like uh, almost like a like a chase cam to the yeah. uh, bow and arrow. Yeah. Into the spell, like if you shoot a fireball, it'll You'll see it launch all the way across and hit the opponent and kill him. Which is mm -hmm. pretty interesting because uh, I notice it's pretty pretty weird, but when uh, you d dual cast a spell in the game and you look at your person in third person, it kind of does like a little Kamehameha stance, so it looks pretty mm -hmm. cool when you do like a fireball like thing. See, I, I didn't even notice mm -hmm. that, but I did notice the other day I was fighting with a shield and a sword, and um, I was just trying to build up my uh, blocking abilities so I, I, I you know I was just blocking and that was pretty much it letting him hit it because I'm strong enough I'm like 62 at this point just mm -hmm. wanted him to hit it and get the experience so my ability would go up you know every now and again I'd bump him you know if he was gonna do something big to like knock everything out of my hands or some shit like that and um, due to my armor ability which gradually brings his health down due to poison he was almost dead so when I went to hit him with my shield it actually did this animation where I took the shield hit him from the left side and I smacked him from the right side and then I did like an uppercut and then he like fell to the ground so that was pretty yeah. cool I mean even shields shields you know they already had the swords like you said melee and now shields and spells I know they had awesome. one before where uh, if you had a shield and a sword and you went to go for a kill animation one of the animations was you take the, sh the shield you'd bash them down and then you're just like your sword looked pretty cool or mm -hmm. whatever because it was pretty funny because you would just go up to him like 
bam, like right in their face with the shield. Yeah. yeah. And they'd fall down, and you're just like, uh -huh. it, You ever get that one shield that has all the spikes on the front of it that does the bleed damage? Yeah. So you do that, and, and you literally just see, like, these spikes go through the person coming out the back, and then they fall to the ground, and then you slice them through the throat. Yeah. You guys are talking about a lot of the animations, and I know there was that update that came out. What was what was it like before those animations though? Oh, there were still animations for melee and, and a few, like the shield just, one he just talked a about. Just few melee animations. Yeah. I think it was uh, a total of like three or four. Well, they didn't have anything at all for, for know, spells for archeries or, or spells. spells or anything. But yeah. now they do. They've expanded it. Plus, not only can you do you know shouts and you know have your house Carl or allies follow you, it also works because one of the big complaints everyone's had is um, sorting. You cannot sort through all the materials, so now you could hit sort by value or sort by weight. So if you become over encumbered, instead of looking through this list of all your shit, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what's going on, you sort by weight, find the heaviest thing, mm -hmm. then sort by you know value and see where it stands and try and you know get rid of your shit accordingly. It's it's interesting that Bethesda is putting that in, you know, like the Connect update, because I know the PC version. You know, they've had patches, uh, maybe it's not called, maybe I shouldn't call them patches, but, uh, no, you know, like user, yeah, yeah mods, mods yeah. yeah, the user made mods that would let you sort by weight or sort mm -hmm. by, uh, yeah. by title or something yeah. like that. See, I think that's what it is. I think that's why they put it in with this, because they've seen a lot of the PC gamers, mm -hmm. uh, modding the game in such a way, and it's not something to really exploit the game, it's just making it a little bit better for the experience. And they're like, well, you know, this is something we didn't think of. We'll add it into this, you know, just pack it all into one package. And mm -hmm. as far as I can tell, it works very well. You know, I mean, sorting is one of the biggest issues I have. Because my character can hold, you know, 500 and something pounds. You know, I, I go through many dungeons mm -hmm. collecting shit. Mm -hmm. And sorting is always a big issue because I have to go through the whole long list of a thousand something items. Big pain in the ass. But it seems to be fixed. I don't know about mm -hmm. the connect thing, though, about... Uh... I just don't like the idea of trying to have to memorize voice commands for my games. That's why I have the controller there, though. It's like the buttons, they have a definition for themselves. So it's like if I want to, you know, if I want to mm -hmm. go and equip something, I know to hit the menu button. I don't know to be like, okay, what do I do? Like, uh, well, here's equip, the thing. Uh, mm -hmm. this. Well, here, here's the real thing, though. I mean, I know you're saying that there's this fault of, you know, hey, I don't want to have to rem memorize all the different shouts and all this fake language that doesn't exist in real life, but guess what? They're not forcing it on you. You can still play the game oh, however you I want, know that, but... but, you know, just use the ones you want to use. It, like, you could completely ignore all the shouts and everything and just mm -hmm. say, sort by value or sort by weight. And you can still take advantage of that aspect of it without having to realize, you know, mm -hmm. Faro Da... Uh, Lufin Go or any of the other fucking dragon language. So there's a lot of leeway there. You don't have to memorize it all. You know, you can pick and choose what you feel is worth your time. But overall, it looks to be really exciting. And and actually, I plan on buying a Connect just for this. Mm. And uh, hopefully, it'll pay off later. How much is Connect nowadays? It's uh, 129. Whoa. 129 oh. used. 150 and it comes with like uh, some like vegetable chopping ninja game Ooh. and Ooh. Connect Sports maybe? Uh, I don't know. No, Connect Adventure, that's what it is. Connect hasn't sold me on anything. I mean, the Skyrim thing's cool, but. Yeah, but think I'm about. Fat. I don't want Skyrim. Or, I don't want Connect. Yeah, but what about the. Well, no, yeah, like you said. All right, well. well what if we were able to uh, get a little exercise in there? Because I know you're interested oh, in losing weight. What if they added the feature where you could literally like swing your right hand and there goes your right sword, you know, or bash it. your not even if you're sitting down. Uh, I would do it. It seems pretty I interesting. Do it. Well, Anything like that, I'd go play Skyward Sword or something. Well, yeah, yeah. They don't make you, you know, swing the sword if you don't want right. to. But I'm just saying. There's a possibility, like they could open up the door to where but you could do, you know, actual you know, commands. One issue with the Skyrim thing, though, is they really could have done a lot of these updates with just the the headset you're already using. On exactly. Your console. Which Who's to say they won't? The Who's to say they won't? They're, they just, they're not going to. Yeah, because they want to sell the Kinect. Uh, wants to sell okay, the well that's not Bethesda's fault. That's Xbox's fault because they want some more peripherals. Right. Well, Microsoft. Well, I'm sure Bethesda everything. probably wants to sell the Kinect too, because I'm pretty sure they can get some residuals from Xbox. 
Yeah, but it's Microsoft. nowhere near as much as Xbox is getting. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if it came out on a, as a Kinect download, yeah. and then eventually, if enough people boycotted it, you know, yeah. it would come out as a, just a regular download. So Skyrim uh, update for the uh, Connect integration in a few weeks. Yeah. So I'd I say am looking forward to it. Probably sometime later this month or early May. Should have to do that. We also have some information on Halo 4, isn't that right, David? Yes, we've got some uh, new information this week on Halo 4. A uh, ton of new information, mainly dealing with the uh, campaign, the single player, and the multiplayer of the game. So, uh, to jump right in, they're mm -hmm. saying that uh, the multiplayer for Halo 4 is going to be known as like Halo Infinity. Well, why is that? Hm. And that's because the uh, the ship, the uh, UNSC Infinity, which is a uh, frigate ship on the game, is uh, going to be the uh, mainly the entire host for all the maps that you play on multiplayer. I think I heard and something about that. Isn't there uh, Forerunner technology on that? That's uh, that's like their flagship now, right? Um, it's a ship that's used for training uh, Spartan fours, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But um, it's no, it's part it's part of the Marines. It's part of the uh, Marines. Uh, it's one of their ships. Well, no, I realize that. I'm saying that, but they found new Forerunner technology to power the engine. Well, well, I'll get into that. Anyways, it's about the multiplayer though, uh -huh. there's a new program, the Spartan Four program. And if I know correctly, uh, I'm not too sure, but from what I saw uh, looking around online, I believe Master Chief is part of the Spartan 2 program. Um, anyways, these Spartan 4s, they look ridiculous, and we'll have some screenshots up on the Facebook. And uh, their suits, they look really futuristic. Um, there's a lot of weird details, and apparently their suits are supposed to be a lot more lightweight and compact than Master Chief's armor, because his is more, like, bulky while theirs fits very firmly to their uh, bodies. And uh, another thing about the Spartan 4s is instead of uh, children that were kidnapped and sent into the program, they are actually volunteers of Marines. Marines Ooh. that have volunteered for the program. The best of the best. Spartans. I like that. Uh, they are like part of the top elites of uh, special ops and stuff like that. So, but that's what, the. Um, what do you mean about children? That was the original Halo story. That was um. They would okay. catch them young and then they would train them from. A that's child. the whole thing about Master Chief. He was a kid that was kidnapped, and he was pretty kidnapped much kidnapped or volunteered. No, he was kidnapped. Oh, okay. Well, I shot my theory down. He was kidnapped and he was pretty much forced into this program to become a super soldier, a Spartan, mm -hmm. the Spartan Two program. So. Uh, yeah, the Spartan Fours, they are volunteers from the Marines, so they they know exactly what they're getting into and everything. So, But the whole thing is, is that uh, this is the multiplayer. This, I haven't even gotten to, into the single player yet, or the campaign. Mm -hmm. But this is the multiplayer. This is the red versus blue stuff. There, You play a Spartan Fours on the ship. But the thing about the ship is that it has all the maps that you'll be playing on because it kind of ties in with the story so it can make more sense. Mm -hmm. And it's because or the ship has like little simulations, kind of like holodecks on Star Trek. Um, mm -hmm. So to get into the single player on the game, as you remember in Halo 3, the game ends when they stop pretty much the entire Covenant force from destroying all the life in the universe. Um, <clears throat> and in the process, um, as Master Chief is trying to get away, half the ship 
is destroyed, and the other half is sent through like a, a warp hole. Yeah, like yeah. They're trying to like. Well, something. the thing is, the the halo ring was about to blow up, and they were trying to do like a warp escape or whatever. Oh yeah, it gets cut in half. By yeah, it the gets warp cut in half. And the front half actually gets warped away to safety that had the arbiter on it, and he goes back to Earth and tells them that Master Chief died yeah, in the battle right. and shit. Mm -hmm. And then Cortana and. Uh, Master Chief. Master Chief. Master they Chief goes off the somewhere else. Yeah. They're just floating along they're in floating space. Along. They're floating around mm -hmm. in space. They like, have no idea where they are. And so Master Chief is just like, alright, I'm going to go to sleep. Wake me when you need me. Yeah, exactly. And that's the uh, mm -hmm. the end of Halo 3. But if you... Spoiler uh, alert. If you beat it... <laughs> it um, seems to happen multiple times with Master Chief. Oh, um, well, that's the only time. Do they ever try to link... Uh, the game marathon with Halo. Well, that's an underlining thing. There. That's an underlining thing, like because marathon. This is it like the same universe. No marathon. No, not Halo, at all. But not really connected. Yeah, it's, it's the only thing that's connected is actually the game studio itself. But um, you know, it's connected in a very small way, sort of Easter eggs. Because like yeah. the big thing is is mm -hmm. the number seven, like you know, Sierra one one seven, and you know, all these sevens are thrown throughout all the games. That's mm -hmm. one of the key things, I guess, in Marathon. And then also in Halo 3, they had the terminals, and a lot of the story that was integrated into that, I believe, hinted towards the Marathon uh, storyline mm -hmm. as a part of, you know, I guess you're a hacker in that game. I haven't really played it that much, so I can't mm -hmm. comment too accurately. But, um, yeah, I've only really played the trial of Marathon. But, um, yeah, so they get lost in space, Master Chief Cortana. Master Chief goes into cryo sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, then if you beat the game on Legendary, you'll see at the end how a planet shows up out of nowhere as they're floating along in space. And that's the, that's the complete ending of Halo 3. They're like, oh, here's this planet, and it's like, oh, and it's like, whoa, it's like, they might have something more at the end. When yeah. you thought uh -huh. Halo 3 was going to be the last, it's just like, oh, here's this planet, so it's like they're going to continue the story. Mm -hmm. Alright, so... Here's where Halo 4 picks up, and that's when uh, mm -hmm. Cortana wakes Master Chief up because they uh, they actually, uh, a Covenant ship, they still don't know whether it's just a rogue ship that is just all out by itself, mm -hmm. or if the, if the elites, because the elites at this point are with the humans. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they turned uh, good, and they're like, they have a truce with them. But you mean by the elites have a truce with the Spartans by Halo 4? By no. the time Halo 4 happened? Well, no, they, during they Halo established, 3. Yeah, they established it in Halo 3 because they were losing their ground in the Covenant and realized uh -huh. that, hey, these prophets, you know, might actually be wrong, you know, uh -huh. about, you know, the Halo being some holy relic when really it's just something to eradicate the Flood. But, um, yeah, they, they realized there was a conspiracy within the Covenant, and so the elites kind of broke off from the Covenant and, like, joined the humans. Yeah. There's that um, iconic uh, scene in Halo 3 where mm -hmm. the there's the elites on one side of a hangar and then there's the humans on the other, and Master Chief is grabbing all the human weapons and sharing them with the elites, and then uh, the Arbor mm -hmm. is grabbing all the elites' weapons and sharing it with the humans, and they're sort of, like, mixed matching and it's really the first chance that you get to, you know, start off with alien weapons if you wanted to and stuff. It's sort of the mashup. But, um... Okay, so yeah. they're floating off in space, and this uh, this uh, rogue ship attacks them, and it's actually an elite rogue ship. They don't know if the elites are intentionally doing it, or if they don't know that they they have a truce with the humans or not. It's not specific yet mm -hmm. whether there's a whole other thing going on, or if these elites are just are just floating around. They're like, oh, humans, and they're attacking Master Chief. But yeah, Cortana warns Master Chief and wakes him up out of cryo sleep and then she she says that uh she went ahead and uh pretty much like updated the firmware of his like armor and his hud everything so that's why mm -hmm. uh the game will look different cortana also looks different too like she's more she's not more she's more human looking than a hologram you can't really see through her like you could in the other games mm -hmm. she's more fully like visible oh, I, I swear they they try to change how she looks almost 
Most every of the, other uh, game. Well, well that's time. that's except like except for Halo One and Two. Like once no, it was even, like three on the next console and everything. No, no, no like, they, Cortana got to look better. She's changed throughout because there's an underlining thing that they say in the story. It's not a really big plot, but uh -huh. it seems to be a big player in this one. Is the fact that um, she's an AI that the humans programmed. But mm -hmm. over time, you know, she's acquiring new knowledge, and of course, and she's able to mm. uh, intake a bunch of knowledge all at once. Yeah, and throughout um, that, her whole programming is changing as well. It's sort of like like a computer learning so much information that it becomes well, self-aware. This was another thing I was going to touch on about Cortana, is that apparently AIs can only live about seven years, and it's uh -huh. starting to get to be about the time where she's going to pass away or whatever. Uh -huh. The way this works, though, is that AIs, they take in so much information mm -hmm. that they start going insane with all their information. They start breaking down and everything. And that's mm -hmm. when they end up, like, pretty much dying in the end. They said that you're going to see a lot of connections between Master Chief and Cortana, as in, like, a friendship. And I'm pretty sure eventually Cortana's going to disappear. And you're going to see, like, how Master Chief deals with that, probably. Um, in the end. And he relies a lot on her, too. I mean, she's very well, useful. She's basically like the only like friend he has or whatever. Yeah. Well, and that could be hard Cor since he was abducted, you know. But Cortana is just the interface for yeah, uh, a bunch of information, though. Yeah, she's but just he's the the, each person has their own interface. It's unique to only them, the, you know? The Spartans, yeah. Yeah, each Spartan um, has their own thing. Cortana, Cort the Cortana is only for Master Chief. That's it. But she has a lot of connections to the oh. to the Forerunners, and they're going to get into a lot of about the backstory who? on the Forerunners. Who on, do you uh, think uh, program? Who do you think programmed Cortana as she is as the personality and body and everything that she is? That, um, that could be unveiled in the new game. I know Halo Reach. Is the first time they introduce Cortana, like as that uh, within the timeline. Yeah, because uh -huh. they're like because Halo, Halo Reach is a prequel. Because okay. Master Chief's not in that game, or he's not playable in the game at all. But mm -hmm. basically, uh, you get Cortana, the AI. You don't. They don't really specify that it's Cortana. They're just like you need to get this. AI to the ship, it's very important and it's very mm -hmm. special or whatever. Do you and you're supposed to assume that it's Cortana. Do you think that if whatever. if all these AIs are uh, unique to the different Spartans, do you think the AI itself is supposed to motivate the Spartan? You know what I mean? Because <coughs> oh, yeah. they could all have the same data, but then Cortana is unique and, and another Spartan would have a unique uh, interface or yeah. whatever. But the thing is, is that the AI picks the, picks the Spartan. Yeah, they say Cortana he, picked Master Chief because yeah. of uh, his uniqueness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously before they get, you know, in, integrated with the Spartan itself, they have somewhat of a unique personality. Because they're able to so pick and choose. It's more of just, uh, it's more than just information. There's a, like, a deep connection between Master Chief and Cortana as in, like, a friendship and maybe even, like, love or whatever. Mm hmm But, um... I would just wonder if, like, where does, I mean, where does the information come from? And, uh, I could see them doing something where they would want an interface that would really... Yeah, see, it says right you know, there, okay. originally with the likeness of uh, Dr. Catherine Halsey, that she's the doctor. She, she was the daughter of Halo the guy, Reach. the captain of the one ship, right? The bald guy no, from number two? Or, or number that's three, the I mean? doctor in Halo Reach. Oh. Uh, the lady that's like, here, take this AI. Oh, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that they found on that one planet that spoke some weird language, but it seemed really close to Russian. Near the beginning? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's the Doctor in Halo Reach, or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> She's also, she was also the creator, I believe, of the Spartan 2 program. <clears throat> Anyways, um, yeah, well, to go on with the campaign, with the single player, mm -hmm. so they're getting attacked by these elites out in space. They crash land on the planet that they show at the end of Halo 3. Mm -hmm. That planet's called Requiem. The thing about this planet, though, it's a uh, it's a forerunner. It's got a a sphere around the around the planet, like a shield called like a a Dyson sphere. It's supposed to protect the planet itself um, from any threats like 
say the flood or the uh, like the halo rings mm -hmm. from wiping off out existence this sphere is actually supposed to protect that planet and it's got it's basically forerunner technology and so there's uh, there's rumors that of course there's going to be probably forerunners still living on that planet oh wow really that's probably cool. and there's going to be of course completely new enemies that they're going to face that are uh, inhabiting this planet um, right in Halo 4 yeah there will be new enemies there will be new technology new weapons all kinds of new things, probably new vehicles and stuff. So you'll see a lot of new stuff in this game, as long as well as uh, old enemies as well, like elites and grunts. Yeah, but everyone's gotten like a makeover, it seems, right? Because I've seen one with uh, the elites, and they, they look a little well, more streamlined. Everything's a little updated. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, that's going to be uh, happening. And uh, actually, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to learn more about the events leading up to and in and parts of Halo 4. Mm -hmm. um, Halo Cryptum and Halo Glasslands, these are uh, novels that are out now, will explain more about mm -hmm. for the Forerunner backstory and the events leading up to Halo 4. So apparently you'll, if you want to read those, you'll get a lot of uh, information there. Um, let's see. Yeah, they've made a few books. I, w I wonder if they keep making more books. They've made about nine, I think, so far. And they, they're probably going to continue the story. I mean, anywhere we can make money plus enrich the story for fans, uh, there's always a market for that. Well, if the multiplayer mm -hmm. is anything like Reach's, I'm going to enjoy it. Because I like Reach's multiplayer. More so than uh, Halo 3? Yeah. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the equipment, i got to be honest. I mean, the jetpack, mm. it's really cool. I mean, I, I find each equipment has its own, per, you know, like, pluses and minuses. But overall, I mean, I don't know, I was fine with, you know, Halo the way it was. You know, just running around, jumping, throwing grenades, shooting and shit. I feel like, I don't know. Well, see, the thing is, is it can still be that way. No, I, I know, but it's just, it just adds, if I don't you, know, maybe I'm an old school they person. Have, they've got, like, Slayer, which has all the equipment and everything. And they've got Slayer Pro, where you don't have any of that stuff. Basically, you just run. Oh, nice. I've actually never played that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, all in all, these screenshots, and we'll post them up on uh, the show notes, they look really amazing. Uh, you, you know, you got the BR, you got your HUD and everything. It looks like uh, you just have shields like you did back in Halo 2 and Halo 1. No, sorry, Halo 2. So you don't have to worry about uh, collecting health packets and shit, which I'm glad for. I didn't like that whatsoever. Uh, cinematics look really good on this, you know, a couple still shots that we got here of Cortana and with uh, the elites. Looks like the Arbiter, perhaps. And also, there's this one screenshot, which we'll, I'll make sure to put up there. Um, it looks like you might have a armor ability, and you have four different kinds of grenades, like you did in Halo 3. Mm -hmm. Although, <laughs> a bunch of them look different, like the emblems look different than Halo 3, so... I mean, it could just be, you know, frag, sticky, or plasma, and uh, spiked mm -hmm. in the flame grenades, but I'm thinking they have two different new ones, because there's a half-moon crescent, and then there's a diamond-shaped one, and I'm wondering what those mean. Those could possibly be some uh, some new grenades. And apparently yeah. they're, uh, they're reverting the BR back to the way it was in Halo 2, but it's going to have some new upgrades. I don't know what they mean by that. Or then maybe like two times scoped in instead of one. Yeah. That could be cool for, you know, the, the perfect anti-sniper or sniper rifle. Yeah, that would be interesting uh, if it was something like that rather than upgrades like, uh, you know. Stronger or anything like that, yeah. Yeah, uh, you also, know, multiplayer adjustments or graphical yeah. upgrades. Also, I noticed the, uh, the gun holds the same it did always, you know, 36 rounds a full clip so that's pretty cool but um and then you'll also see they've got the new models for the spartan fours which pretty much look you know it looks <laughs> a, it reminds me a lot of crisis too i don't know if that rings any the bells to anyone blue else spartan in the background is brick dancing not confirmed <laughs> yeah not confirmed yet uh yeah, they, they remind me a lot of, uh, of Crisis 2, and then the face mask is, it, you know, it, it comes to a point at the chin, almost as if, like, Shredder, sort of. 
mm -hmm. with like five little dots for air and stuff. So it's not that big HUD that you had before, like the big bulb that right. Master Chief's yeah, known the, for. Uh, there's just, that weird thing with the the eyes. Yeah, it's just like a it's little thin a visor, pretty much. Yeah, very and thin then, uh, visor for the eyes. And then you notice in between the big hunks of like uh, pliable armor, it seems to be like a snake-like suit. Probably some sort of super uh, chain mail sort of thing, space age yeah, goodness. Looks, looks I'm like sure in the training they'll explain all this. Perhaps uh, Halo 2 style, where they put you in the machine to test your armor and let you know what's going on and everything. But um, all in all, it looks really amazing. And uh, as a big Halo fan and someone who sort of fell off his wagon with you know ODST and Reach and sort of embraced the Call of Duty route, I'm definitely looking forward to coming back to the Halo franchise and and falling in love with it all over again, because, I mean, yeah. as long as they have an awesome story and keep the multiplayer at the very least the way it is, I'm sure they're going to sell a lot of units as they're expected to do so, so looks like good fun. Yeah, I really like Halo, uh, definitely, you know, a lot of people like Halo, and, you know, Halo 4 is probably going to be another great Halo. It does really look like it's going to be a step above of something like uh, ODST or Reach. Yeah, this is probably the first continu actual continuation in the progressive story because ODST and Reach are prequels, I believe, or, or how are they fitting well, so the, the whole thing of how it works in the storyline is that Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, and Halo 3 Mm -hmm. have their own setting with the Covenant and how the Covenant versus Human War goes on and the Flood mm -hmm. and their whole thing about Halo 4 now is that they're going to introduce something all completely different altogether. but they're going to still keep the Halo with the Spartans and with Elites and stuff like that those will still be in there but the mm -hmm. majority of the story is going to be completely new it's going to go into the yeah. Forerunner history and into all that backstory but but they're going to probably probably going to have another trilogy here in their own series four or five and six talking of, you know with this whole new storyline so I wouldn't be surprised to see you know you know more Halo games in the future after this overall I think we're all excited for it yep can't wait till the 6th of November so that's it for Halo 4 we got anything else no, I, I would say no. This, yeah, that's this, probably a solid show right there. Yeah, we've been recording the show for a while, so I think we have enough for an episode. We're going to tell the, uh, mm -hmm. the listeners like where they can find the us show and, stuff. and how, what we're going to do. Like, Well, right now, I consider this a practice show. Uh, we're, we're trying to, you know, figure out... Our, Work some like kinks a, out. Yeah, we're trying to, like, find our groove or whatever and uh, you know besides the show's flow and everything I have to uh, you know get this stuff on lips and, and everything that's pretty much when I'll consider it to be official again when it's back on the lips and it's back on the iTunes mm -hmm. probably gonna make a YouTube channel You've been listening to Generation Catalano. Send any feedback to jennercatshow at gmail.com. That's G-E-N-E-R-C-A-T-S-H-O-W at gmail.com. And thank you for listening. Yeah.